The standardized patient program, I call the SP program, um, is vital to the curriculum at Duke NUS for, I think, two reasons. SPs are great for teaching the students, but also for testing the students. And when it comes to teaching the students, it's a great opportunity to bring in a whole load of faculty to one place, like the Clinical Performance Center where we are. We can hire a bunch of SPs and get the whole class to practice a skill all in one class session. That way we have faculty directly observing the students. The students all get an opportunity to practice. Um, so there's a great way to sort of uh, make the education fair for all the students. When it comes to exams is where the standardized patient methodology is really done very rigorously at Duke NUS. For exams, it's fantastic to have standardized patients because we can standardize the um, criteria against which we're assessing the students. This means that we can bring in patients who are standardized to play the same role. It allows the students to feel that they're being fairly assessed because they get the same case as their classmate gets, um, but it also allows the faculty to assess them in a more reliable way because they're comparing the student's performance with Mrs. Tan in each and every encounter. It's not a new patient every time. So this is where the standardization comes in to play. We really need to be rigorous in the way we train the patients because if the goal is to have them be exactly the same in each room, then we have to train them in such a way that they portray the case exactly the same time and time again. So getting the patient perspective I think is one of the key benefits to using standardized patients. In real clinical practice you can't stop the interview and say to your patient, how's that going for you? Or can you give me some feedback on my communication skills? Because that's not the job of the patient. But with a standardized patient that is part of their job. They give feedback to the student um, or to the learner um, and they're trained to do so in an effective way. So we actually use the standardized patients to deliver feedback on all sorts of things. Um, the way they make eye contact, the way they use gestures, um, the way they attend to the patient's comfort. Um, and although we often have faculty members observing the encounters with the patients, and faculty members are great for giving feedback to the students, it's very different um, from the patient perspective. When you want to know about eye contact or um, attention to patient comfort, the best person to ask is the patient. And by using the standardized patients, we can get the students that kind of feedback directly from the patients. Using SimMan, one of our high fidelity simulators, is a great way to teach the students about um, patient care. SimMan can mimic all sorts of patient um, scenarios and symptoms, and he does so in a safe environment. So we use SimMan here in the Clinical Performance Center where we can control um, the setting and also the um, scenario at hand. So the students have an opportunity to um, participate in a scenario that's been planned for them. So it's not opportunistic. We don't have to wait for a patient to come in with, say, anaphylactic shock. We can give each student an opportunity to uh, manage a patient who has anaphylactic shock. This makes the learning more complete because we don't have to wait for a patient with a particular condition, um, but it also makes it more safe for the student. So imagine a student who's new to medical school or new to a different discipline being presented with a case of anaphylactic shock or something else that's very complex and serious. It can be a bit overwhelming. Here in the simulation center we're able to say, look, it's under control, the decisions made here won't affect a real patient, but it's realistic enough that the student feels that they're really participating in a real patient scenario. We know from research that students who are asked to commit to a decision, to actually follow through on what they think is the proper decision making for a patient, helps them learn more than if they just sit back and watch. So being able to do experiential, hands-on learning with the sim man is making the educational impact much greater for the student. So we have very much experiential learning here, it's hands-on, and the students find that much more entertaining. And with the entertaining or the ed comes the educational value. So the students always give um, the sessions with SimMan very high ratings, they're very satisfied. And I think it's because it's fun and novel, but more so I think it's really actually a great learning environment. The students get an opportunity to encounter um, conditions that they've been learning about theoretically in an actual way and then they also get a real chance to try out decision making or try out procedures, things that are really left to the senior doctors in the hospital. Um, so I think this really helps them move along from being you know, the junior doctor to a more senior member of the team because they build more hands-on experience. Um, as far as keeping SimMan in tip-top shape, we um, do bring in the service provider to come in and do um, 
routine maintenance on SimMan as needed. We also have a few rules when you're working with the simulator, like keeping away ballpoint pens. Ballpoint pens give SimMan a tattoo that will never come off. So um, there's some rules about treating him with respect, and we do talk about SimMan is, and with the standardized patients, that they should be treated as you would a real patient. So we often ask the students to give SimMan the same respect that they would to a real patient. And in doing so, we have so far managed to keep him in quite good shape.